Good morning, everyone. My name is Helena Nat. I'm the Executive Director with the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. And uh, welcome to this very informative webinar. Um, since, uh, you know, March of uh, 20, I would say 2020, we have um, kind of pivoted to uh, Small Business Fridays. We call it Small Business Fridays because we can provide as much information to help your business grow. The idea behind the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce is to give you the tools, um, whether it's networking, we have a lot of online networking still going on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then um, we also do uh, Mondays Clubhouse. If you're not on Clubhouse and want to join us on an open house uh, networking, that's on Mondays at uh, two o'clock. But Fridays, we kind of uh, designate to provide information, whether it's uh, we've been hosting the SBA a lot with the PPP um, information, economic injury, disaster loans. And we uh, and then also inf informative webinars like this one about vital signs and warning signs for your small business success. And we have um, our member, Sean Al um, Ali. He's a CPA. He's the founder of Best Pro Bookkeeping and Tax. And he is phenomenal. He has an expertise on this type of information to get into the hands of entrepreneurs and small businesses. So right now, um, the way that it works is Sean's gonna put on a presentation, put your questions in the chat because at the end, he will be answering the questions Q and A. And if there's anything that is uh, more substantial, he will get in contact with you afterwards. So definitely um, put your information in the chat. I'll be monitoring that. Um, Sean's going to do the presentation and then do Q&A afterwards. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to Sean. Thank you so much. Um, you're an expertise on this. And uh, for all those who are listening, wait until you find out his background. It is amazing. So go ahead, Sean. Hi. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Helena. And before I give my introduction, I do want to formally thank you again, Helena, for uh, supporting us with this uh, webinar through Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. So yes, everyone, thank you for joining us. I am Sean Ali. I am a CPA by profession, trained by PricewaterhouseCoopers originally. You may have heard about them. They are one of the big force globally as to public accounting and auditing. After that, I did a few years of internal auditing again with some international corporates then decided to be a banker. And for the last about 20 years, I have been a banker uh, as a chief financial officer, chief compliance officer, and chief risk officer. Uh, throughout my about 25 years of professional life, I have been passionate about small businesses. I have engaged with them. I have been their advisor. I have been their mentor. And of course, when it comes to my personal network, I have been helping uh, then with my accounting, bookkeeping, and CPA-related expertise. Uh, this webinar is absolutely critical, as you will uh, notice once we started. And one thing I promised Helena, and I'm promising you as well, hopefully this won't be just theory. This will be real practical tips coming out of my 25 years of interaction with the small businesses. So let's right away dive into the webinar. All right, so you all received the introductory email which had this uh, uh, tagline where we gave the statistics as to small business failures. And you all noted that about 20% of small businesses fail within the first year. And another 10% in second year and another 20% in uh, within the first five years. And by the time 10 years are hit, almost 70% of small businesses actually fail. Now, obviously you all will appreciate and realize this is a huge number. It's not a small issue. It's 70% is a huge number. And especially if we focus on the uh, first year, which is 20%, that is absolutely critical uh, when it comes to startups. So today's webinar will focus on the key aspects of why the businesses fail or succeed. And I will focus also on the startups 
because this webinar focus is on any size of business. It can be a sole proprietor, which is a single person business, can be an existing old business or a startup, or it can even be a small business as per SBA definition, which is by the way, a small business administration, you all must be aware of them, uh, government agency. And they, their definition, they have different bases, but generally it can go up to 1500 employees by definition, a small business and up to $38 million turnover. But uh, you will also appreciate that uh, today's webinar concept and aspect which we will be discussing, uh, these aspects are actually universal and applicable to any size of business, whether they are Fortune 500 or like tr trillion dollar companies like Apple and uh, Amazon and Microsoft, or as I said earlier, a small single person business the basics don't change and the basic concepts remain the same. So as you can see, this failure rate is across all the industries. Uh, for example, generally it's about the same rate, but for example, if you see restaurants, uh, usually 80% is the failure rate within the first three years. And for restaurants within the first one year, actually the fail failure rate is more than 20%, which is almost about 50%. So we will be discussing uh, the, as the title says, vital signs and warning signs. That's the uh, theme of today's webinar. And as we all have noted, the top reasons for failure is money running, money running out at different phases, at different stages of a small business. So we will try to understand why uh, businesses run out of money, why at the first place they get into this issue of running out of money, and what are the uh, remediation steps which we can take to actually uh, address this issue. All right, we all know just uh, for humans, we have uh, four vital signs. We all know, I don't want to test your knowledge, <laughs> but we all know what those four vital signs are. We are talking about temperature and heart rate and blood pressure and breathing rate. These are the vital signs for, for us, uh, for human beings. Similarly, a business, irrespective of the size, they have some vital signs. And if these vital signs are within the normal range, if they are healthy, in other words, then the chances are the overall health of the business will also be good. But if any of these vital signs are showing some weakness or some sickness, the chances are that that business will in the short run or in the long run will have some health issues which could be small, which could be severe, and which could be just like humans can even die, even the businesses can fail. And in other words, they can die. So these are the, if you ask me, based on all the professional background and experience I just shared with you, if you ask me the, the net net of all my professional interaction, I would say it all boils down to these five vital signs for a business. And these are sales around that we have profitability, cash flows, business growth and security, which in, in, in our technical term, it's called secured going concern. Now, as you can see in this diagram, I have put sales in the middle. The reason for that is that I call it the mother of all these vital signs. Uh, so sales is the focal point or the focus of the business health. And if you realize, you will appreciate that no matter what we are doing in our business, and again, whether it's a, anything I will talk today, it's applicable to irrespective of the size. Of course, the focus is more on small businesses of this webinar, but as I said earlier, it can go to, can be applied to any size of the business, including international giants. So no matter what we are doing in a business, you will appreciate that from the time that idea comes to our mind, till the time we fail or till the time we succeed and we pass on the business to next generations, the, our focus is always on sales. We are always trying to do better and better and better to make sure that we have 
consistent sales and we have uh, consistent growth in our sales. And if you are a startup, our focus is to make sure that as soon as possible, we end up with some sales. And I must clarify, sales is different than marketing. I'm not talking about marketing here. I am talking about that first, first penny and the first dollar which you book as your income, that's called sales. Marketing is the step before sales. When we try to promote, we try to generate awareness, we try to build a brand so that ultimately we end up with some sales. And sales is also analogous to the terms which we use in service industry, it can be revenue, we call it revenue. Uh, we can also call it customers. Uh, so, so if sale is there, our focus is on sales, whether we are a sole proprietor, one, one man show, or we are a trillion dollar company, we try to do everything, keeping sales in mind. That's why I put it in the center of this diagram. That's the mother of all these vital signs for a business. If sale is there, and if sales are healthy, then, then there is a definite chance that your business will eventually be successful and you will have success in your business. Now around sales, we have these four critical vital signs. The first one is profitability. Of course, a business, the main purpose of a business is to earn profit. And of course, this whole webinar is focused towards for-profit businesses. It is not targeted towards uh, not-for-profit businesses. So profitability is a vital science that should be there. If your business is profitable, that's a good, healthy, vital science. Cash flow and positive cash flows is another significant vital sign. If your business is generating cash flow and it's self-sufficient as to the cash requirements, including uh, paying out to back to you, back to the owners, then we have a good, healthy cash flow vital sign, which I call and of course, we all want to grow. We don't want stagnancy. We want to grow. We want to make sure that we continue to optimize what we have set up. The baby should continue to grow and should give us optimum benefits. And then the fourth one is the security. No matter how healthy, just like human beings, no matter how healthy we are, if we end up with an accident, an unfortunate accident, everything can come to a standstill. God forbid uh, we can have disabilities or in worst case scenarios, people die of accidents. So, so there is a limit to managing and controlling uh, our health and similarly health of a business. So that's why this fourth sign is also very critical to do whatever is possible within our control to make sure that what we have developed as a business, as a successful business, that is secured in the long run so that we can not only continue to take care of it and grow it, but actually can pass it on to our next generations. So these are the four vital signs which are absolutely critical for any business. And as I have noted here, as you can see, sales for a business is like blood which is of course oxygen in human body. So we can have the best of the best uh, organs in human body, uh, but if the, if the oxygen is not there, we can have problem. So similarly, if sales is not there, you can have all sorts of uh, uh, things in a business, but it's not going to ultimately work out. All right, so if you have Good, good profitability, good cash flow, good growth in business, and you're secured, it is guaranteed that you have good, healthy sales. That part is very simple. We all understand that. That if you're, if you're profitable, your cash flows are good, you are growing well, and your business is secured, this is a guarantee that that means your sales are healthy and you are doing good as to the sales. But what is important to understand and appreciate is that the reverse is not true. If you have very healthy sales, that does not alone guarantee that you will have good profitability, you will have good cash flow, you will have healthy growth, and you will be secured in the long run. So this is a very critical point to understand and to appreciate that uh, this reverse relationship is not guaranteed. It's, it could be a case 
where you have great sales, but it's still you end up with loss. And that could be issues with your operations and costs that I will cover during the webinar. You may have great sales, but still you may be struggling with cash flows in your business. And that we will be discussing later. You may be growing fast. And in, in some cases, it could be phenomenal growth. It can be uncontrollable growth that you are not even able to manage your growth. Still, you may, you may not have, you, you, you may have issues. And similarly, you, you, may, you may have great sales, but you may not be secured. You may run a risk of uh, coming to a, an abrupt or a sudden standstill or a partial or a complete failure. We happen, it, it happens all the time. Like recently, because of this mishap, we all have COVID. You go through the, just Google it, how many bankruptcies and how many uh, global names, giant corporates are going through bankruptcy. You name it and it's there, basically. So this is absolutely critical to appreciate. Now, while talking about sales and vital signs, I would also like you to uh, look at this, uh, these four charts and these four charts are of course there can be uh, probably a dozen types of trends when it comes to sales charting uh, but i have tried to bring the four most critical uh, patterns or trends so that uh, we can focus on these so uh, as to the uh, axis it's you can treat it as a 12 months monthly chart or where it says uh, slash one, two, three, four, that you can imagine it could be any first period, second period, or third period. It can be one first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, or first year, second year, or third year. Uh, that's the axis definition. Uh, the chart is the same. Don't worry too much about the amounts. They, these can be thousands, can be in, in thousands, can be in million, can be simple for a small business startup, can be just a dollar value. So the focus should be on the trend line, not the amount. It can be any value you put it there. So the first one is, which is supposed to be the most healthy uh, 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 sales situation, which is our, now we all know that's our blood supply, that's our oxygen for a business, the mother of all vital signs. So the most healthy sales situation uh, could be uh, this chart number one, which is controlled growth. So it's not only healthy, but there what we are seeing is that it's a very gradual step-by-step uh, -step growth of business when it comes to sales. So it's a startup started in period one, which could be first year of business, or if it's a totally new business, imagine, just assume it supposes January, it starts with zero. And with a consistent rate of growth, the business is growing as to sales and continues to grow period after period, month after after, uh, month after uh, month and all that. So this is the most healthy, a most desirable situation. Same goes for number two. This is a business scenario where uh, there's a huge success when it comes to the launch of that business. So in period one or the first month of launch or the first year of launch or the first quarter of launch, they, they launched the business, opened the door and right away within the first month or within the first period, there was huge success and they start with a huge sale. And just like the first scene, the sales continues to grow with a consistent rate of return. So these two are the healthy scenarios, I call it. Then comes the third scenario, which is again a bumper launch, just like number two, but then it fizzles out. And that obviously is a huge problem. And out of those 70, 20% of the businesses which failed during the first year, this is also a very common uh, scenario that they do an excellent job when it comes to pre-launch marketing and branding. They open their doors and again, they have this huge success within their first month or the first quarter or whatever their first period uh, definition is. And then suddenly they start to see a constant drop in their customers, in their sales, in their revenue. And that's a huge issue. And invariably, this, this, these such businesses also end up with a failure within the first one or two years, depending on how much 
money they can arrange to try to continue to support that business. If they don't have much, much money, they fail quicker. If they have some extra money, they may try to use that money, but ultimately they could be failure. And of course, we will discuss more details as to why it happens. But most commonly, these things happen in businesses like very common example is restaurants. And if a restaurant, uh, everything is good and the launch is good, but if the food quality is not good, if the service of a restaurant is not good, or if, if, if the, these days it's social media uh, age, everybody ranks everything, services and products and all. So if suddenly there are huge issues on the social media because of, the, of, of this, uh, this service quality or food quality, then this is very common as to restaurant industries. You, they will see like this, that slowly the sales will come down. And last but not the least, we have this failed strategy where a business may occasionally have sales, but there could be periods, infrequent periods, uh, where uh, there, are, there is either no sale or some sale which is happening. And of course, that's a failed strategy. That's not a desirable strategy in the long run. So these are critical to keep in mind while we will be going through uh, the remainder of the webinar. It's absolutely important. So this was the part of the vital signs. So if we look at the title of the webinar, there were two distinct parts. One was the vital signs, other was the warning signs. So we are almost 20, 25 minutes into the webinar. We have covered the vital signs, just to give you an idea. Of course, we can write books and books on this critical topic, but I'm only trying to bring the practical part into this short uh, 45 minutes or 50 minutes because we'll have Q&A later. So keep this in mind while we go to the second segment, which is the warning signs. But before we go there, I want you all to take a, a breath and try to ask yourself very honestly from the depth of your heart, and try to ask yourself which chart is close to your heart when it comes to your business. Whether you belong to or you currently you are uh, within the first and the second chart, which are the top two charts, then I must congratulate you. Congratulations, you have done it. You know how to run a business. Your idea was great. And I wish you all the best for future as well. Now, unfortunately, if any of you belong to the lower two charts or currently you are, you may not belong to that, you may recover, but currently if you are in this uh, chart number three or chart number four situation, then obviously that's a huge issue uh, because we all have already appreciated that sales is the oxygen for your business. And ultimately, unless you resolve the situation, the chances are that God forbid, uh, you could be one of those that number which could be in that 20% of first year or 70% within 10 years of failure. So do ask yourself and if uh, the, by any chance you are within three or four or something like that, uh, then I would highly recommend you to uh, seek professional help uh, from your CPA if you already have your CPAs. Uh, uh, I, I, I hope you do have CPAs because if you have CPAs, I don't expect you to uh, be in this situation. This should not happen. Uh, but uh, most probably if you are in number three and number four situations, most probably you don't have a CPA attached to your business venture. So do look at it, look at the experts and, and do seek help. All right, so that was the vital sign. Now let's get into the uh, warning sign. Now, warning signs, again, they could be just like my favorite. When I do webinars, my favorite analogy is always around either human or the car. These are my top two favorite uh, analogies when I give examples. So just like for, for us, for humans, when, when it comes to our health, there could be uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, issues or signs of some or symptoms of some underlying health issue. Similarly, for a business, there could be uh, uh, numerous uh, areas or issues or signs or warning signs. Now, what I'm trying to do here is to uh, just because of the time shortage, bring the top 15 
areas where the significant warning signs will happen. And if we catch these warning signs on a timely basis, the chances are we will not have major issues and we will be able to steer through our venture, our project and our business in a successful manner. And of course, uh, because these are 15 items, uh, we will not have the luxury of time. We will have to uh, quickly go through them. We only have about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so we will spend on an average about a minute or minute and a half on each of these areas. All right, so the first one is an independently prepared business plan. Now, the, some of you and perhaps most of you are uh, already in an existing business and perhaps few of you may be startups. Now, you may think that you are already in a business, so this, uh, this may not be applicable to us, but the fact of the matter is that this is one of the biggest warning signs for uh, business ideas. If, if we launch a business without a formally documented business plan, uh, the chances are that there could be huge risk of accidents and partial or complete failures. A business plan, uh, basically it, it brings clarity and visibility into the future. So just like, uh, suppose if I have a business idea, I want to go ahead and do it, but there are many things involved. So the business plan will have those the standard table of content. I don't want to go into that. That's not the topic for this uh, webinar, but it will talk about everything. It will talk about your idea. It will talk about what products and services you're talking about. What's the market size, whether it's a large market or a small market, what's the competition situation? What, what are the uh, capital injection requirements? What are the financing requirements? Whether you will do it through personal financing or you will need external financing, whether it's a it's a, it's a production facility, manufacturing facility, or is it something which you can do virtually? And whether what kind of financial projections you will have for the next uh, one year, 12 months, three years, five years, or even long-term. And if you have external financing requirement acts to your capital injection, uh, then you may even be required depending on the significance of the uh, project. Uh, and the capital requirement and the borrowing requirements for the capital, you may go into more advanced topics like uh, long-term projection, cash flow, discounted ca cash flows, and all sorts of things. So it's a, it's a misconception if a business person or a person who is trying to launch a business thinks that I don't need a business plan. It's okay for very, uh, very, very small business with hardly any capital injection. For example, I'll give you an example. Suppose I'm doing a job and I also know how to make websites. And on the side in parallel, I have started making websites for some customers. It doesn't require any capital investment. You only spend a few hundred dollars to, to do some apps and start making websites. Whether it works, it doesn't work, it's no big deal. I have my job. So you may not need a business plan. But if you are doing a full-time business where you will not be, you will be banking on as to your bread and butter and to support yourself and to support your family, you have to have a business plan, especially if it's a major project. By major project, I mean, if you have to invest anything $50,000 and above, from $50,000 to say any amount, but for a small business definition, you can say a million dollar or $10 million or $50 million. It is absolutely critical to have a business plan. And I must emphasize independently prepared business plan. You may be an MBA and you may be starting your own business, but independence is absolutely critical for a business plan because of the simple reason that the moment you have an idea in your head, you already have a bias towards that idea you already have an emotional attachment to that idea. And you need a business plan which, which has no emotional attachment. It's just like we go to our PCP with a headache, whether it's an usual headache or a migraine or God forbid a brain tumor, it will be cold cut. Your doctor will tell you how it is. So there shouldn't be any bias. That's why you may be an MBA from the best of the best colleges in, in, in the world, but when it comes to your own business plan, you need an independent person to challenge you on all your assumptions. And it cannot be your family member. It cannot be your best friend. You have to go to a cold cut professional 
who will give you the facts and who will challenge you, discuss with you all your business plan. So if you are a startup, it's never too late. You can still project your future, work with a professional. If you may be an existing business and if you are a successful uh, business person, then you may be thinking of opening a new business. So make sure you do have a business plan and it's absolutely critical. All right, so going further, the next item I would say is we must appreciate the phases of a business. There are three, again, based on all my professional experience, I bring it down to three critical phases, pre-launch, post-launch, which I am further emphasizing on the first three months and the first year and beyond. We have to plan this critically. And of course, all this will come out of a good business plan if it is done professionally by an experienced person. Uh, so pre-launch means that you have your idea, you are creating awareness, you are doing soft marketing, and you are doing all sorts of things. You are making the facilities. If, it's, if it requires infrastructure, suppose you're opening a restaurant or a school or setting up a factory or a manufacturing unit or a production facility or setting up a showroom, all that is you're doing the preparatory work, you're hiring people, you're putting furnishing and renovation and everything. That is pre-launch. But critical thing is during pre-launch, you cannot forget your marketing part because you're, remember that first, second chart of bumper launch and with consistent sales growth, that happened because that business or those businesses while doing pre-launch, way in advance, they start doing some kind of marketing, of soft marketing, hard marketing, formal marketing, so that when you get into the second phase, which is the post-launch, you should have a uh, success there. Now, first three months are absolutely critical for any business, any small business especially. And, and again, based on all the professional uh, experience, I can tell you, and everybody will agree, that if the first three months of your business were not or are not as expected, there is a huge problem. You have a problem. And again, it goes to the mother of vital signs, sales. If the first three months especially of your sales are not what you were expecting, that is a huge issue. That is a huge warning sign that God forbid, we will end up with those uh, numbers of failed businesses within the first year. So again, I will give you the same example. If we have set up a school and the first three months after opening our doors, we don't have actual admissions. In, the, in a restaurant in the first three months, we don't have the sale which were expected. Then we have a problem and it needs immediate help. You cannot postpone that help. You need to go for help immediate. And, and you need to decide whether it's feasible or not feasible. In some cases, businesses, they, they realized that it was a totally wrong idea. It is not going to work. And I, my, most of my assumptions were wrong. So it's better instead of investing and uh, using all your life hard earned savings into this business, it's better to wash your hands and come out in a decent manner. If we don't do that, these things usually end up with bankruptcies irrespective of the size of the business and a lot of uh, other complications, reputations and all that. And of course, first year and beyond, that is critical. If you're successful within the first three months, there, then it comes to fine tuning your business and making sure that you go successfully beyond. I'll have to actually hurry it up as you all can appreciate 15 items. We are not even left with one minute uh, per item. All right, so the third one is fixed cost versus very important. This is the most critical part. Mostly that 20% businesses which fail during the first year, this is the culprit. That if you, end, if you start a business which has an unavoidable fixed cost, and fixed cost we all know, fixed cost means you have to pay bills with or without sales. You have to pay bills with or without customers. You have to pay bills with or without earning any revenues. If you have, for example, it depends on the nature of business. Some businesses are heavy on fixed costs. If you have set up a factory or a production facility or a showroom or a school or a restaurant, you have to have premises, you have to have staff, you have to have chef, you have to have furnishing, you have to have uh, utility bills, you have to have so many things. This can add up to a lot of money. Now, if you have to pay these bills 
irrespective of whether you have business or not, whether you have sales or not, this is the top most culprit why businesses fail, especially in the first one year. And that's why you saw in the first slide where I had highlighted in red, most businesses fail because they run out of money. So I have an example, numerous example. I'll give you one example. I, I remember a client where this person had $100,000 and he said, I want to open a language tutoring school. So I want to teach people French and Mandarin and English for people who don't have English and other languages. And I, at that time, there was no this high tech online stuff. So he, he, it was all physical. He, he took the premises on rent $4,000 a month. And he said, I have my part-time tutors in place. I have to pay their salaries every month, about $3,000. Then I'll have utilities and all that. And I'm planning to spend $20,000, $25,000 on renovation and buying computers and furniture and all that. So I have total uh, $100,000. I will be left with all this. I have budgeted for six months to pay for all my bills. And in six months, I am confident I'll be successful. And that's, that's my plan. And what happened, he came to me, he said, I, I have burned all my 100,000 every month, I'm paying my bills, I'm not getting the enough students. So I, I'm now on the verge of closing down. So these things happen, it's critical to keep your fixed costs low. And if you are in a business where your fixed cost is high, you have to be even more critical when it comes to your business plan and projection, as well as your point number two, which is the first three months of your business. Marketing, very important. It should come out of your business plan, but this is not a one-time thing. It's not only for pre-launch. You have to do it throughout your life based on your business success. If you are in the chart one and two previously I mentioned, then also you have to continue to do, do what you are doing right. If you are among those chart three and four, unfortunately, then you have to rethink and refocus and, and seek some professional help seek some marketing help, go to some marketing experts, and they will see whether there is any possibility of bringing you to chart number one and chart number two. Absolutely critical. I cannot go into the detail, but there's a whole topic of marketing, which includes marketing market side versus the competition, whether you're over marketing or under marketing. Over marketing is as bad as under marketing if you have limited resources as to the capital injection or ongoing uh, working capital. Sales growth, we have already discussed. I won't even spend a few seconds on this. We have understood that was our mother of vital science, so we don't have to talk about that. Innovation and adaptability, depending on the nature of your business, if you're not, especially in these days of technological advancement, if you are not keeping pace, with what's happening around you and what your competition is doing, the chances are, unfortunately, we may end up in those businesses which fail within first year or five years or 10 years. So it's absolutely critical, especially depending on the nature of business. For example, I'll give you my own business, CPA services, bookkeeping, accounting. A modern bookkeeper, a modern accountant, a modern CPA, there's no concept of in-person service. 80, 90% of the clients will do everything online, will do everything remote. Of course, there are clients, very respected clients who are old, uh, very old establishment and the technologies were not that advanced. They still feel more comfortable, more at home when it comes to in-person service, that's fine. But as a general business model, that's not fine. So look at your model, whether you need an innovation and adaptability at all times. Product service delivery, brand reputation. This is that chart number three, bumper launch and then failure. That happens because you are good with sales, but you're not able to man maintain your operations quality. You're not able to deliver on time. You're not able to stick to your commitments. You're, you're just overwhelmed with the success of your sales. That could be as bad as having no sales. Because if you're not able to deliver the products you have promised on a timely basis or the services you have promised on a timely basis, eventually you will have defaults on your commitment. You may be exposed to legal challenges. You may be exposed to reputational risk, which can very quickly bring our business down. And that is a big no-no. All right, then operations, employees quality, turnover, supply chain and vendor. Again, the same as point number seven. 
we have to focus on everything end to end it cannot be just top line which is sales everything has to be just like my favorite analogy human body unless all organs work in complete harmony with each other we cannot have an overall healthy body same goes for our business that's our baby that's our bread and butter unless all organs of the organization end to end from sales right till the uh, management and and uh, management information system and everything in between production delivery commitment unless everything is all five star we can eventually have some issues some symptoms some sickness some issue as to the vital signs and all that management time balancing absolutely critical i see all the time owners are bogged down with bookkeeping with their tax returns with their operations issues too many turnover in my staffing every day i have somebody resigning that means you have an issue you need professional help your focus should be on your mother of the vital signs and your security those five vital signs if your if your sales is good reputation is good profitability is good cash flow is good you are growing well you are secured in the long run everything else has to be balanced as to your time these these areas you need help depending on the size of your business if you are a sole proprietor one person is still you need to balance all these things based on their sensitivity and importance working capital absolutely critical to maintain that's where you run out of cash if you have very good sales but your money is stuck in receivable you are not able to collect money you are stuck with inventory you that's not moving fast enough then you have an issue you will run out of money profitability versus cash flow remember profit good profit doesn't mean good cash flow i have seen cases where owners very often mix personal money with business money there has to be a discipline just like we cannot use all our personal money for business similarly we cannot use all our business money for personal almost every every other month i come across a situation where some owner tell me i have collected sales tax but i don't have cash flow i have not paid it to the government they tell me i have deducted payroll taxes from my employee salaries but i don't have enough cash so i will uh, I, i will not be able to honor the commitment and and those kind of things so remember just like it's as bad both ways it's bad we have to balance it there should be discipline excessive drawings are very bad and similarly we cannot put all our hard and money into a business especially if our business is not very uh, promising and again as i said you need independent person with no bias towards your business to give you guidance because the bias has to be there. we get emotionally attached just like sometimes some people invest in a share in a stock market and they love for example uh, apple and theoretically of course apple is doing very well but theoretically suppose any company is stock if even if it's going down it's tanked they get emotionally attached to it and they want to stick to and hang on to this sinking ship which is not good if your business is not doing well eventually you have to take a decision just like cancer just like uh, anything else you need to decide but that can only be done if you deal with an independent person who can challenge you without any emotions involved in the in the deal ongoing capital injection for working capital unrealistic recovery expectation you are always hoping that tuition example i gave you tuition center for languages he said i burned all my 100000 because every month i said it's a matter of next month next month i will get a student next month i will get a student and i kept on paying all my bills till i had nowhere to go but i exhausted all my personal borrowing resources official borrowing resources and now i am on the verge of bankruptcy that's a big no no compliance disaster recovery taxation license compliance regulations insurance coverage technology cyber security all this is that fourth vital sign that is the going concern the security while you are doing business while you are doing operations while you are doing sales while you are doing marketing you have to keep in mind that hopefully god willing you want to we want to pass on a very successful business to our next generations 
And for that, this point number 13 is absolutely critical. Otherwise, you can have a sudden disaster. Of course, sometimes things are uncontrollable, like COVID, we couldn't help it. A lot of business went out of business. That was beyond our control. But certain, most of the things are our control. You have to have good compliance with all the regulations. You have to have proper insurance coverage, proper license compliance, and proper these days, the big threat is the cybersecurity. Your business, if you are especially online, something can be locked out by hackers and all those things. MIS, don't do. If you, are, if you can afford, please don't invest your time with your own bookkeeping, accounting. You need, especially if your size is growing, you need a bookkeeper, you need an accountant, and you need a CFO review. Remember, a bookkeeper cannot do CF, CPA services. A bookkeeper cannot do CFO reviews. For that, you need the right expertise, but it's not worth spending time, if, especially if you're, you have business challenges or if your business is growing fast. And of course, you need, if your results are not going as per the expectation, the chances are you are, uh, you, this is a huge warning sign and you need to uh, work on it. Of course, a problem in any of these 15 areas will affect one or more vital signs that you have to be aware of. Okay, the last one, two minutes I will take. Uh, Best Pro, I'll talk about Best Pro, what we do. Uh, as you know, I'm a CPA, uh, but, but we, because we have passion about small businesses from sole proprietor to the maximum, we do all kinds of services, which has business plans. We do business plans, we do bookkeeping, accounting, CFO reviews, SBA, these are government assistance for financing. Uh, which we can help applications and processing and other borrowing financing help, business tax system, internal and external audit, process re-engineering if you're not able to handle your operations effi efficiently and other consulting. And of course, uh, we are CPA, that's our tagline at the cost of bookkeepers because we are emotionally attached to small businesses. We keep ourselves affordable. So it's not true when people think CPA means they'll be more expensive, no. They will not be more expensive. And of course, feel free to contact us. Best way to contact is telephone. Otherwise, you can personally send me an email or you can go to our website. And even on our website, if you go, you will be able to see this uh, scheduled free consultation. You can go there and you can ask for a meeting with me and you can book an appointment in any available spot and that will bring you to, uh, to, to, that will do a meeting for you basically. All right, so that uh, brings us to, uh, let me close this window and then we will. Thank you, Sean, yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, so we uh, put your question, Q and A's in the, um, in the chat. Uh, someone asked, how do we contact your company for accounting services? If you can just put um, the last screen. Um, so I yeah. think I already, uh, just best thing is phone. I love to talk personally, but uh, uh, please email me, feel free. And of course you can set up directly a meeting on the website. Any, do uh, people have any questions? Put it in the chat. Um, you know what, Sean, I've gotten, now you also will help keep, um, the companies with their loan forgiveness, correct? If they have any questions regarding any of the stimulus. So if yes. you guys, um, there's a lot of people on here that I know that have been following us on for the SBA webinars. So you definitely, if you have any questions on that, you can also reach out to Sean uh, for that. Uh, SBA, going back to that is really important. Make sure you get your loan forgive, uh, forgiven on that and Sean can help you out with that also. Um, Absolutely. And, and to add to that, Helena, uh, we, are, we have expertise with all SBA programs. Uh, not only we can help with forgiveness, as Helena said, we can also help uh, businesses, especially uh, medium-sized businesses with their 504 and 7A loan programs, which can go up to $5 million and $7.5 million financing, especially for people who have some issues with their credit rating, then SBA puts their own guarantee to help them get financing from other financial institutions. That I'm glad you brought that up. I was that was going to be my next thing. So yes, uh, you know what, uh, Sean is you know it, your your next stop shop type of thing. 
He can do, you know, whether you're an entrepreneur, individual, small business, medium-sized company, major corporation, um, local, regional, national, international, Sean is there for you to assist you. Reach out to him. Um, I'm just gonna, I guess you covered everything because we don't, it's, we, uh, you were so thorough in that. So, well, I, uh, unfortunately, I had to really go fast, but I hope people got the gist of what I would of the message and feel free to have one on one with me with all your, I always say an accountant, a CPA is like your PCP, just like your personal health is not a secret. Your business should not be a secret will help you with any issues. And he makes it very easy and very comfortable ab about that. So if, for, if you are hesitant, you know, not hesitant, but you're, you know, if you have some, uh, you know, um, financial questions, you know what, it, everything is confidential with Sean. Um, so, you know, feel free to reach out to him because some people do get uncomfortable. I mean, you know, during this COVID um, times, you know, it, it's, it's, it's stressful, it's tough, people are watching their bottom line, but reach out to Sean, he'll be able to assist you with whatever your questions are. He's like your, your CPA best friend uh, when it comes to this. Um, uh, people are saying very good presentation, covering all areas of concerns with solutions for each. So you really, really did cover it. Um, Will people, uh, people want to know, will, they, will I be able to get this PowerPoint presentation and send it to them, or you are just going to reach out to them directly, Sean? We can do it both ways. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Helena, uh, being I'm a member of your chamber, and you posted on your website also these videos. But please feel free to directly contact me. Uh, I will share this presentation. It's recorded also. We can share the recording also. And we can go beyond this presentation, actually. And especially my message is to businesses who are startups or who are having some concern. I love to help them. And if I, if I see clearly based on my experience that uh, there may not be much help, then I tell them on their face with based on facts. Love it. Okay, so uh, we answered all the questions. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free. You have the, his screenshot is right there. Reach out to Sean. He has his email right there. Take you know, take a copy. Um, you know, take a picture of it. If you have any questions, you can always email me. I will forward it to you. Sean, thank you so much. This was so informative, so important um that we get that information because it will help you grow your bottom line and you should actually know um you know sean is there to help save you money make sure that you are in compliance and make sure you're you know that you have a cpa is on your side type of thing um a lot of businesses feel that they have to hire with you know a large accounting firm you know, you know it. Sean is there for that. So reach out to him. That's what he's there for. He's he's a, you know a, a huge supporter of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. So he he is a member in good standing. Reach out to him. Thank you again, Sean, for this Thank presentation. You. Anyone that has any questions, feel free to reach out to him directly or call me. Um, like I said, thank you again, Sean. Have a great weekend, everyone. Be safe and be well. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye, everyone.